Hello, my name is Russell Lucas and I've had a haircut. And I'm a theatre maker that interviews other theatre makers. So Dave is on the channel today. I wanted to get him on um, because he is a designer of posters um, for theatre amongst uh, a thousand other things. And I was really interested to get um, the designer's point of view onto the channel to talk to us about their expectations um, from the artist who's making the show and the final product. So uh, click to subscribe to the channel and enjoy. Hello Dave, how are you? I'm very well, thanks, how are you Russell? Yeah, good, thanks for coming on the channel today. Um, I've been wanting to get you on uh, for quite a while actually to talk about poster design. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's something that's not discussed enough um, within the theatre making community. Um, I am looking forward to kind of like pulling up the hood in this interview to talk about, or to, uh, in my arrogant way, to give voice to the designer. Um, I, I, I really want to hear from, from your side of the fence what it's like to make a poster for, um, uh, for theatre production. Um, just to give a bit of back history, you and I met on uh, Sam Wills' uh, act, The Boy With Tape On His Face. Um, and that's, yeah, so we collaborated. Seven years ago, wasn't it? Quite a few years ago, um, yeah. but you are uh, uh, his primary designer for most of his uh, artistic output, um, which I'll put on the beginning of this interview. Um, so, but tell us what you are, because also you do make music um, and other stuff. So, so who are you? Because I mean, you know, nobody knows what. What are you? <laughs> How do you define it? I've boiled it down to I'm an audio visual creator because I spend basically I have cycles one one week or one month I'll be like music 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 and then I'll get bored and then I'll be like design 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 and then I'll get bored and I'll go video 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 and then when you start going video video you go I can put music 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 into video video and I can put stills of design 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 into videos it's that kind of I, I don't know where I, I, someone once said if you're going to do one thing make sure you're good at three things mm. which I didn't question it, I just accepted it and went, that kind of makes sense. So I was, I was like, you know, design, audio, video. Um, and that kind of, it was easy to break down to audio visual creator right. on, you know, on the top of your website or whatever. Yeah, no, that's great. That makes absolute sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then- Depends on doing it, really. <laughs> <laughs> and, so if you were to say, to explain what type of work you've done in the past, what has been your, you know, medium, your predominant medium, but also, so, so let's say you make music as in yourself, you make original music or? Yes, yeah, yeah, original music. So I, I, I trade under Das Head Kino, which was a band name that I came up with ages ago. Um, it's, it's Das Kopf Kino is, is German for the head cinema, which is, arbitrary enough for me to be like, okay, that'll do. But Das Kopfkino is a little clunky, so I've removed the German word for mm. head, and put right. the English word for head in. Right. And then decided it's, you know, it's, it's vague and whatever enough for, for me to trade under that. So, mm. and, it, and, it, and it kind of gives that impression that, I don't know, it's that, it's that kind of, um, it's like all of the stuff that I create comes from a thing rather than a person. I don't know if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah. then you then make also posters or graphic designs yes. as well under yeah. the umbrella. Yeah. Right. How, yeah, how, how, did that naturally occur? Or were you asked to start as a graphic design or I don't know, did you go to university? What was the, the thread? So I went to university and studied illustration and fine art and then um, left university and did nothing with that qualification for over a decade because that's what a lot of people do mm. um and then eventually found myself working for a comedy uh comedy management company yeah. gag reflex in manchester yeah. who represent sam wills but we take on his face although i shouldn't say comedy management they're now just management Right, because you know, they've they branched out into theatre and all sorts, right? Um, and Tapeface needed a poster one day in about two thousand and nine, I think it was, 
and, and I made it and then because I knew how to and then started doing more and more and then it, it also coincided with I started making more posters for different clients that we had and that doing what I was trained to do coincided with me really not wanting to look after comedians anymore right. because yeah because I'm not very good at it yeah no, that's fair enough <laughs> <laughs> um, so so the, the the reason I wanted to get you on was to talk about um what it's like to be on your side of the fence when you're asked to design a poster which must represent a live show yeah so what's that like and um, what, what what do you require really from an from a performer or an artist or a theater company for you to be able to go away and then put that into an actual concept on a poster what, what's really useful um the 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 first well if i can see the show that's quite useful but invariably you can't do that because you're designing for example i'd be designing posters for shows that are going to edinburgh and i might design 10 posters for 10 different acts and i'm not going to go and watch 10 <coughs> edinburgh previews in my spare time but if i can get all of the information that, that i can from um from the performer what's the show about what's the show about really because it's essentially a visual representation of the show um do do, do they know what they want is the first thing that i ask them if they say yes then i go okay we work with that if they say no i go okay let's 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 get started right my favorite answer is no i don't know what i want that's always my favorite answer because the problem is when people do know what they want, because they're a performer and not necessarily from a design background, it's always terrible ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so so when, when, they, when they don't have an idea, they then are going to be able to use your skill set and they want your agency over it. Is that what you're saying? That Yeah, yeah, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, and luckily, when, when someone describes something to me, as in you know the show what the show's about most of the time something fires off straight away an idea fires off straight away and i found with with instant with uh, experience that the first idea that you have is generally the best one to develop even if it ends up being completely different to what you began with i always think sticking with the with the, with the kind of gut instinct idea is right yeah that seemed to serve me so when you present a poster to an artist, when do you know something is correct, if it's right, if you've got it right? Considering that some, some people don't really know what they want. It's, this was a question that I've, I've been not lying awake thinking about, but when, when I first, when, when you kind of, you send me a, kind of, a couple of emails about what the questions would be, and I first read, it is when do you know it's wrong? And I immediately went, well, because this is, and then I actually read it. And well, when do you know it's right? And my partner saw it on an email and went, when do you know it's right? And I was like, yeah, no. Um, I don't, is the answer. I don't know when it's right. Um, it's, it's right when the, when the client says it is. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Officially, it's right when the client say, says it is. Sometimes I will fight them on that and say, you know, trust me, it, it's not right. <laughs> it needs this. <laughs> it needs that taken away or, yeah, yeah. you know, something like that. So I don't think there's a, there's, there's never a moment during the process where I go, it's right. Mm. And particularly not with um, uh, posters for festivals or venues or stuff like that because someone either the festival or the venue is going to want to put their banner yeah. on it or their and it's always completely different color the typography is always completely wrong so at the start of the process you have to go regardless of how good i think this is someone's going to stick a load of crap on it that's going that's going to make me not want to look at it but if you accept that then you know that it's never going to be right I guess yeah. is the answer. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's really fascinating. It's, it's, it sounds like you go through exactly the same process that a performer does, which is 
they'll perform the show and everybody's applauding and we'll come up and go, oh God, that was terrible. Um, it, it's the same sort of <laughs> mindset, isn't it? That we, we, we seek perfection and, and we know the yeah. things that are, are, that are pulling us back from, from reaching that goal, as it were. Because also there, there, are, there are the little things to consider, aren't they, in your design that when, whenever you make a poster, there's also, like you say, the, the details of the wording, the, the stuff that has to go on the poster. And yeah. so I guess as a designer, do you have to allow to compensate for that? Are you, are you now very astute to the fact that at some point this is going to get butchered? Yeah, uh, yeah. The, you have to um, separate the image from the information that you put on. And I, I put the information on that the performer gives me because then that's a, that's a nice little game of information architecture where you have to, I have to make all of the information look as brilliant as I possibly can, but frankly a moron has to be able to understand it when they look at it. Yeah. So there's that kind of balance of, you know, it's all very well spending an hour deciding whether I'm going to use um, Euro style extended bold or Euro style extended, but it doesn't matter if, if, if it doesn't work as a piece of a flowchart of information, basically, you know, you have to design the information that's on it. Yeah. For some reason, I, I seem to have a, quite a good handle on that. Yeah, that's great. I, I think the reason I have a good handle on it is because when they give me the information, I don't read it. It's just a shape to me. I, I'll, I'll spend weeks on someone's poster and then say, when's your gig? And they're like, you designed the poster. I like, yeah, I know, but I, the, the dates are shapes that yeah, I need yeah. to put into the jigsaw. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're the artist of the poster. It's a different experience. Um, yeah. Bonus question. What, what fonts must, must we stay away from now? Are you allowed to say that? <laughs> what what, what um, ones have we been using? Are you allowed to say? What do we have to stay away from? Um, impact? That's impact. pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty um, I don't know. I mean, impact's the kind of one where I'm like, no. But it depends what the thing is. It depends what the thing is. There's, there's, you know, there's no right and wrong. There's only... Yeah. Yeah, because I'm seeing more and more posters that are kind of like post '90s rave, and, <laughs> and now you're looking at them going, actually, it's quite cool now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's like 1997 design aesthetic. As far as I'm concerned, the world peaked with 1997, and then it went really bad really soon afterwards. Yeah, like okay. kind of towards the end of millennium when people were getting obsessed with the millennium aesthetic. It's terrible, awful. Yeah. Um, it might be just before I ask you the last question. It might be interesting for me to to um, expose our dynamic right now because you're working on my poster for my future show, uh, whenever that will be. And what's been interesting is that we have seesawed the uh, artistic relationship because I initially I came to you with lots of ideas but no actual image necessarily, which is uh, my favourite. Right, and then then you went away <laughs> and you came up with, um, you know drafts upon drafts you know we, we kept on you know to and froing and and it felt really it's always felt really good um about the just taking our time because we don't necessarily have an end result do we you know we don't have an end point yet um so we can take our time with it and what i found really fascinating was that i said to you i says i don't think i'll know what i want until i see it and then you sent me some stuff i was like oh that's now something and then i sent it to my director and she said to me said oh that's that bit in the show that's that and I was like, that's so interesting because Dave doesn't know anything about that. But it's that's interesting what you've done yeah. and what she'd read it as was, was lovely. Uh, about interpretation, isn't it? I guess. Yeah. But, um, so, so, and, and then the, the interesting thing I said then was that the image of the poster also has to serve the show. And, and in some ways, that I want the show to serve the poster to a point. Um, and I paused the process, which I find interesting, again, because we have time. I said to you, Dave, we're just going to stop for a while until I get back in rehearsal room again. Because I genuinely feel that the poster is the brand of yeah. the show. They're, yeah. they're intrinsically linked. Um, mm -hmm. And I see it as a forecast for the future that if the show becomes a success, then... That image could last, could be reproduced by you for 15 years, for all we know. Yeah, and it's something that... It becomes, it becomes the logo of, of your production. It's the yeah. trademark, almost. Yeah. So I was going to ask the last question. Now, I, I'm the, the show that I'm making has a foot in a cinematic style as well. And the, the, the character that this show studies, the imagery now is only on screen. This person no longer exists because they passed away. So we're looking through screen. So I was going to ask you, is there a future of 
posters for theatre. Do you see there's a trend now with theatre posters? Are they are they going one way, another way? Are they going backwards or forwards? Because because sometimes I see film posters, and I'm thinking, oh, that's really interesting. They're kind of like taking a 1960s slant to some of their font and using almost cartoon imagery sometimes. And you know, do you see a trend coming in theatre, or would you like to see a trend coming in theatre, live performance? I think um, if we take, for example, uh, your everyday West End show mm -hmm. as a starting point, every single one of those posters are exactly the same, right. which I always found a little bit strange. But then you go to somewhere like Las Vegas and you go, oh, they're all the same as West End. And so I think the bigger the production, generally the less... Um, uh, interesting the the print is you know the promotion the, 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 the design material mm. I, I, I from my experience is I get away with a lot less the bigger the production is because because they brought because they're trying to support a port they're trying to appeal to yeah. a broad uh, demographic which includes people who watch strictly come dancing and that kind of thing so they kind of need that blue background, there's kind of a gold sparkle on the very, very clear font and there's a mm. really nice clear airbrushed photograph of the performer and it's, mm. that's, the, that's the situation where it's kind of, you don't want a designer, you just want someone who knows how to use Photoshop. That's the difference, I think. Yeah. But I definitely think it's the smaller productions that have, um, that give the designer more license to design. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I think in terms of actual styles, like you were saying, the, the 60s and that kind of thing, I think I think if everyone just read Saul Bass's coffee table book, um, he and was then a designer, was like he was hip main, main guy, yeah. If I think if Saul Bass, if everyone kind of looked at Saul Bass and went, yeah, no, that's how every poster should be made <laughs> for the rest of time, then. But, but that's not going to happen with big yeah. productions. Big productions, yeah. I'll put a link on there on the interview here. Yeah, that's interesting because so, so Saul Bass was quite clear, quite concise, bold colours, um, information yeah. economy, etc. Yeah, yeah, um, precisely. Really lovely rules. But and I, I agree with you about the, the say the West End and Vegas idea because there, I mean, especially in London, there's, a, there's probably only two or three producers that are actually behind those designs, maybe five yeah. or six. So yeah. they go to the same designer and use a formula that's worked, but also, you know, caveat, it's the formula they used 30 years ago. And I would imagine, as you are testament to, that the, the, the tide will turn. And I, I wonder if it's, yeah, much more of an independent poster future is coming. I mean, it really works. Otherwise, yeah. you know, they wouldn't care. Because um, the general, general, general public don't care about how well the poster's designed. They just need the information. They need to see the name of the show and the person that they want to see in it. Yeah. 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 And our dream is to get a striking image in the middle of it. Exactly. And I and one of my, I think you mentioned it earlier about the, the face having to be there. I, I, if, almost every time I work with someone, I say, let's not put you on the poster. But invariably, their management goes, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> yes, yes, it's an old fringe uh, myth, I think, that um, you must have a human face on the poster to sell, to sell tickets. But, yeah, no, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I guess there's no market research on it, but I kind of, I wouldn't want to follow that rule. I prefer no. to break it. Yeah, it's much more interesting. I mean, and it's just my opinion. I think if if there's the name of someone and there's something else, the image is not them, it's something else. I think... To me, I would be much more drawn into that mm -hmm. and yeah. just seeing the person with their name above them. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. I'm going to put all your images that you're going to send me over on the front of the yes. video. Yes. I'll put some links uh, as well. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Cheers, Dave. Thank you very much. Cheers, Russell. See ya.